Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to go over exporting video in Premiere Pro. It might sound like a really basic topic, but it's necessary for every video that you want to put out into the world. We're also going to go over how to export videos with an alpha channel for transparent backgrounds, and how to do that right inside of Premiere. No After Effects necessary. So let's dive in and get started. Once you've finished a video and you want to export it, the first thing you're going to do is make sure that you have In and Out markers selected. This will help to ensure that the export only includes what you want it to. Go to the beginning of your video and click I to set an in point. Then, go to the end of your video and hit O to make an out point. Once you've done that, go to the export menu by either going File, Export, Media, or by pressing Ctrl or Command M. Once you do this, you'll see the Export Settings menu pop up. From here, there can seem like there's a million different options available. And truthfully, there's a ton of different options that could meet your needs. But I'm going to show you a few different sets of standardly accepted settings that keep quality high while keeping your file sizes relatively low. The situation we're going to go over first is exporting videos that you want to upload to the internet. For these, go to Format, then H.264. Underneath Presets, you have a ton of options. A safe bet is Match Source with Medium Bitrate if you want to keep file size down, or High Bitrate if you want to have maximum quality. But there's a variety of different options depending on if you know the final destination of your video. For example, there's presets for YouTube and Vimeo. If you want to export your video here, you'd actually have a successful result. But there's a few more options that you can use to fine tune your result. For now, you'll only need to worry about these two tabs here, Video and Audio. Under Video, do a quick review to make sure that your export settings match your sequence settings. If you've chosen a match sequence option, then this should be done automatically, but it never hurts to double check. If you need to make changes to an option that's grayed out, then click the check mark box next to the option that you want to change and it'll be made available to you. There are a couple different things to consistently make sure of. Field order, progressive, and aspect should be square pixels. Choosing render at maximum depth will help to increase your video's quality a bit, but it'll increase the time it takes to export, so keep that in mind. Under bitrate encoding, it's strongly recommended that you choose either VBR1 or 2Pass. 1Pass will take less time, while 2Pass will hopefully give you a little quality boost. Your bitrate sliders are the last piece here. Notice that increasing your target bitrate will also increase your estimated file size, but it'll also theoretically give you a slight boost in quality. Many people claim different sweet spots, but if you're uploading to sites like YouTube, you generally won't notice any positive change beyond 20. One thing to keep in mind as you're making these decisions between quality and file size is whether or not this is your final draft that you're exporting. If you're showing this video to someone to review or to critique and to change later before calling it done, I would encourage you not to worry about making the quality very high. Depending on how large your project is, it can take a long time to export. There's no sense in waiting forever for a video to export that you're not presenting to the world and that you're not trying to impress someone with. Now let's go over audio. This will be a lot simpler as we just need to make sure each option is set at the highest quality setting. For audio format, choose AAC. Sample rate as high as possible. Stereo, not mono. Audio quality high. And bitrate 320. Now that this is set, make sure you choose where your video will export to. Click your blue output name and choose your file destination as well as the name you want your video to have once it's exported. Lastly, to make sure you don't have to do this all again, I'd highly recommend saving your export setting as a preset. Name it whatever you'd like and next time you can save yourself a lot of time. And there you go, click export and your job is done. Congratulations, you've made a high quality export that's viewable on a Mac, PC, and almost universally uploadable and readable. But it's important to mention here that H.265, or AGVC, is another option available to you over H.264. By all means, yes, it's a superior codec to choose in terms of compressing the same file quality into a much smaller file size. However, at this point in time, this option is far less compatible and reliable. You may experience problems viewing or playing, either for yourself or to whomever or whatever you're sending this video to. As always, it's encouraged that you experiment and test things out to see what happens, but keep in mind there's no guarantee H.265 will work out in your situation. So we've just covered exporting a video that you want to upload to the internet, but in case you're working in a specific field like broadcasting for example, ProRes and DNX HD might be more applicable to you. Keep in mind, if you're doing this for a company or someone asking you to export this format or codec, they'll usually give you specific instructions on what they want, but let's look at our example nonetheless. Go to Format and choose QuickTime. Again, there's a variety of different options ranging in pros and cons with different quality levels and resulting file sizes. But an important distinction I need to make is that if you're working on a PC, Apple ProRes probably won't be available to you. So the next closest equivalent for all intents and purposes is DNxHD. Regardless of which one you're working with, the only difference you'll see in export settings will be this resolution selection for DNxHD, of which you'll have a selection based on the project that you're working with. Chances are you'll be working in 1080p. And keeping in mind these different options range from higher quality and higher file sizes to lower quality and lower file size. 
Scroll down and make sure that your frame rate matches your project, and that your aspect is in square pixels. It's recommended that you render at maximum depth and that you use maximum render quality. And that's it, you're good to export. Congratulations! But there's one more thing that we want to go over, and that's how to export a video with an alpha channel. In case that sounds new to you, we're talking about a video that has a transparent background. This is commonly used in After Effects for things like lower thirds, but we can export with a transparent background right inside of Premiere. Let me show you. In your export settings window, choose QuickTime. Under video codec, you can choose either animation or PNG. Keep in mind that PNG will usually end up with a file that's a little bit smaller. But when you're working with PNG files in a lower quality, some people have said that they experience a minor shift in color. So keep these things in mind when you make your choice. For us, we're going to choose animation. Now, match your settings to your sequence settings viewable here. If you have trouble adjusting your height and width independently, you can unlink them with this button. Choose Aspect Square Pixels. Now beside depth, you should see two options, 8BPC and 8BPC plus alpha. This is where the magic happens. Choose 8BPC plus alpha and you've told Premiere to export with the transparent background whenever there's no video. Now choose a file location and name it and you're ready to go. You've just exported a video with a transparent background right inside of Premiere. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.